Welcome. My name is Mark Anthony Dubose Jr. And I was born July 4th, 1986. I'm gonna say thank you for tuning in to try to figure out some more about your dogs. There's something that I wanna talk about today and that's a simple concept of things that I've come to learn. Just being out here on this land and do what I'm doing. Raising some animals and now raising some, some berries and bushes and, and growing some grasses and, and, and just doing this stuff out here that just really has changed my lens on pretty much absolutely everything. And especially when it comes down to dogs. Cause I never was really in tune with them. I just would tell them dictate to a point that they were in an excessive amount of fear to be able to listen to me. And in my th saying excessive fear, you're probably saying, oh, the dog's going to be scared, head shut down and not being a fuck. That's not, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it in a different sense that just what I have a, a good understanding of today, that the dog will only listen because it's got a knee collar on. The dog will only listen because it has a prong collar on. The dog will only listen because of all of this stuff, as opposed to just, just listening and wanting to be with me. And that's the part today that I want to talk about is just what I know is true to be with absolutely everything on this planet and everything on this planet has a balance and everything on th this balance is the concept of trust and respect and if you are not trusting where you are is going to be able to be be good for you you're going to you're going to stumble and fumble and if you don't respect it you're still going to stumble and fumble you have to have both and this is something that I think is super fascinating because us as humans like I, I don't I don't know why but this is just stuff that I've seen you know I, I know this from a man's side of it I don't know what a woman's side of it is it would be kind of cool if I could see both, but I only know what, what a dude is looking at and, and what, he, what he's basically at the end of the day just kind of expecting at the same time with the way that nature works. And the way that I see things is it's so easy. It's so easy to trust somebody. It is like you could literally meet somebody and within 15 seconds, you could trust that person. You could just look at them, just shake their hand and say, wow, you seem like a pretty cool person. And you sign up a, an appointment, you do something, you do make something happen and they're there on time. You're like, wow, I trust this person. Like you, you showed up, man. You actually followed through. It's like so easy to do that, human to human. We just, we just see people mingle, just talk, and, and they show up, and, and everything is just, it's, it's, it's pretty much good to go. Like, I could trust you almost instantly. I could trust you before I even know anything really, truly all about you. I could just, just, I, I got you. But that's the difference where I'm going to say is how animals, and in reality, most of nature is. It takes a lot to get it to trust you. It doesn't just show up that way. It doesn't just, just wake up and look at you and say, hey, I trust you. No, it's something that at the end of the day, we as humans have to earn from everything. The horse, the donkey, the dog, the chickens, my goodness, all these animals, my, my bushes, my trees, my grasses, everything. It doesn't just look at me one day and just automatically trust me. It's going to like figure me out for a little while. That's why some animals, man, especially if you know anything about other stuff than dogs, I, I highly recommend people, especially if you are a said dog trainer, you should be looking at horses like crazy because sometimes you can't just... Let me just put the halter on it and just take it out. Let's just go for working out, working. Sometimes it just needs to sit in the pasture for a while. Sometimes it needs to sit there for a couple of years just to, just to understand where it's at, to calm down, to just get in the sense of everything is okay. And you're not out here to try to hurt me. You're not out here trying to abuse me. And, and that's, the, that's the concept of the differences of where I'm going to say is like human beings, or I'm going to say a man and how I see the world compared to what especially the animals are. The animals are not fast. And I think that that's where we're struggling with dogs and horse and all these animals that we're trying to integrate. And this is why it's hard to have parrots and, 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 and eagles and, and hawks and, and all these things and dolphins and whales and all these animals. They're, they're very, very complicated to get very close to because we're, we're, we're like being human beings and being like, oh, if I give it food, it's going to trust me. And that's not the case because the more food you give it in reality, the more it's distrusting you because it's looking at you like, what's going on? There's some trickery going on here. That's why a lot of times when you give dogs treats, they're, they're at the end, you're, you're trying to reach it and they're just, they're, and then they take it and move back. They're just like, what's, what's going on here? What's happening? That actually creates them to really just look at us even more suspicious as opposed to just calming down, relaxing and just, just, just saying, okay, I know who you are. And that's where I think a lot of people are struggling because you think that the dog should be at the end of the day, the same way that you are, that because you are able to easily trust, the dog should be able to do that same thing. And then there's a part of it that I've come to see is, is realizing the, the respect part of it. The animals, once they trust you, the respect is like instantly, it's like instantly there. It's like instant. It's just like, bam, okay, what are we doing? Where are we going? We just make this happen. All right, let's just do that. But for humans, that's the part that takes almost a lifetime in reality for some people. That's the part that's really, really sticky. That's the part that you could trust them instantly, but then you start to lose respect here, 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 here. And then you get to the point of disrespect. And then once you get to the point of disrespect, that's when things get very complicated. That's when that person or that thing or that being is going to start to try to damage you and try to destroy you. 
because they don't if they don't respect you, they don't care to to worry about the boundaries and anything that you you have in place about yourself. They're gonna try to push every little hole because they don't respect you. And that's the thing that with dogs that we're we're coming at is thinking that that's gonna be the hard part. And and it, we, I just see everything is just being backwards. Everything is backwards. Everything with like all the dog training techniques is backwards. We're we're trying to get the respect of the dog without gaining the trust of the dog. And you can't mix, you can't like, I only have this and then this will come later. It doesn't work that way. And I don't know why, but it's just what I've just come to see. And, and again, I'm not the end all be all, but I do talk a lot of what a lot of people have to say. I'm starting with trust first. Trust is the foundation of all relationships. You have to have that. And then we can move into the rest of the stages. But if you do not have trust, there's no reason to, to even worry about going to the next stages. And that's why for us as humans, us being extremely highly sociable, that we, we could just see someone and just like, hey, how's it going? And, and we're cool with each other. We can get in a car together. We don't know each other. I mean, it's fascinating going to like other countries and you see someone that's like from the United States. It's like, oh, I'm from the United States. I'm from the United States. But when you're here, you know, it's not, we're not that close. But you could go on a whole weekend backpack in the mountains trip with this person that you know nothing about. We could instantly trust somebody. But you're not going to do that with no dog, with no, with no animal at the end of the day. But especially dogs. They're, they, they're, they're, they're suspicious, man. They're like, what are your intentions? What are you going to try to do to me? What's happening here? Why, why are you all on me? What, what's going on? And then the more and more suspicious they get, the more and more they're not even considering to care about trusting you. And that's the thing that we, we, we can't rush. We can't just say that I want it and I want it now because this is just what I said that I want. And, and we as humans are getting so pushy. And you wonder why your dog is pushy, I'm going to say. But we are so pushy because we just want it. Like I'm looking to get a cone for this dog and I just want it. I got the one that cost me an extra dollar fifty because I can get it today shipped. I don't know, man, it's fascinating. We get stuff shipped the same day at this moment to my door or they took it, take it to the gate. But if I had the gate open, they could take it to the dang on door. It's just fascinating. And, but that creates a, an extreme level of pushiness that we think that we should just be able to have because we want to have. And that's not the way this world works. It's not how nature works. Nature is time. Nature is just hanging out. And nature is just all about just coming when it's ready to come. You can't rush it. The one simple thing that I can say is if you try to, a lot of y'all struggling with growing grass in your front yard, more and more you keep doing to it. The more and more you keep rushing it. The more and more you keep pushing at it. The more and more you're just like fiddling, doing all this, the more and more nothing happens from it. But the more that you just do what you're supposed to do, you put the right stuff on it that you're supposed to, you water it the way that you're supposed to, and you leave it alone, the more you're going to see way more success. And that's just how nature is. The more you're fiddling with everything, the more you're struggling. I mean, this comes down to just basically everything that we have in nature. The more you're fiddling with the trees, the more they're going to die. The more you're fiddling with growing your corn, you're not going to have any corn. The more you're like, let me try this and try this and try this and try this, as opposed to just putting it in the ground and letting it do what it's supposed to do. That's how everything on this planet works. And that's the same as us as humans. But we, we just see things differently because we... That, that the best way I can say it is just straight up what it is. We can easily lie to each other and it's just, we can get through. I can say, hey, you know, this is the type of work I do. This is who I am. This is my spouse. These are my kids. And I could be making it all up, but I can be saying that to you. And you're just like, yeah, yeah, I hear you. you, you that is who you are. I can say that. But that's the thing that we have a disconnect, especially with two animals on this planet, which is the dog and the horse. And the donkey is super similar, but especially the, the, the dogs, they know that we're lying. They know that we're cheating. They know that we're not representing our true selves. They know something suspicious is going on. The, the words I like using there is something's fishy, man. Something fishy going on. I don't know. I don't know what's happening here. So the more that we're doing suspicious stuff to the dogs, the more that they're getting further and further and further away from us. And then when they get to the point that they're just like, I don't think I ever can trust this person. That's when the disrespect comes in because they didn't ever get a chance to even get to that first fundamental core part of building a relationship. And then, and then that's where you got a dog that is taking everything from you. It is pushing your buttons with everything. It is demanding everything from you. It is just, it is just a ruthless, man. Ruthless is how a lot of y'all dogs are, unfortunately. And it's because of mainly the unfortunate thing that I could say is just everything that I see is being backwards. Everything that I've learned in dog training techniques and how to get them to sit and down and heal and come and do all this, it's, it's all just so backwards, 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 backwards. To the point that some people are getting some great success, but they have an excessive amount of management that they have to continue to keep on doing and thinking that that's success. 
where I don't want that. I just want to be able to hang out. And again, maybe I need to make a whole video of what I'm talking about with what I'm looking for from a dog to make sure that that's what you're looking for. But I'll give you a basic overview right this second. I want to be able to take this leash and have this dog and do what she's doing right now. I want to be able to do this everywhere I go. Out here, she was a little moving a little bit because there's like bones and all kinds of stuff. She's trying to eat everything. So, so it's a little extra again. But, this, but I want her to be able to get quick, calm down. And that the, me, the whole concept of what I say is socialization is taking them everywhere. That I, I want to be able to have a leash like this and just what my dog looks like. That's my expectation. If that's the expectation you're looking for, then that's what I, I, I want to be able to say something to be able to help you to be able to get that. Because it's not coming down to all the, the only word I can use with it is seriously the foolishness, man, of trying to teach her how to lay down like this with giving her treat after treat after treat after treat after treat. treat. In the same way, the same way that I was just doing it a couple videos ago, of forcing down, 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 down. And she's just like, I'll do it on my own, man. I don't need you to, to do that to me. And she's proven that to me because I wasn't trusting her. I was putting out there being disrespectful to her. And then she's like, she, she didn't trust me. So her not trusting me and me trying to, in reality, tell her what to do, we're, we're button heads. And that's what dog training tells us to do today. When the dog doesn't trust you, you build that trust by giving it treats. You build that trust by giving them toys. You build that trust by, by giving them praise, by giving them pets. That's not how you build trust in a dog. That's not how they come to us. That's not at all how they come to us. And that's why a majority of people are struggling today. And, and or you claim you're not struggling, but to do something as simple as just be with your dog and take it places, you have to like load up with all kinds of stuff. You got so many back, back hit, like a, a, a emergency things. You got, you got all this stuff to try to try to get yourself, get your dog to be there with you. You got everything with you, as opposed to being just you. The high value item to the dog is you. When you allow that dog to just trust you without trying no trickery, because the dogs can see through us, man. They don't. They 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 represent just what pure like honesty is all about. That's what's fantastic about them. So when your dog is just acting like a butt, it's just showing you 100% what it is. It's not lying. It's just show. It's showing who it is, and and it, that's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. That's something that. I want more people to just think about the concept of understanding that trust is not just given. And trust doesn't come the same way that we as human to human trust each other. Trust with animals is time and patience and time and patience and having them stay near you and not doing any extra foolishness with them. Just hanging out with them so that they can, when they decide, they will come to you. They will make the, the, that decision. You cannot make that decision for them. And this is a part where we as humans feel like I should be able to do whatever I want and I'll tell you and I'm this and that. And it don't work that way. It will if you want a trash looking dog, a dog that's always on edge, walking on eggshells, a dog that's like, I don't know, is it okay? Is it okay? You, you will get that. You will have a dog that appears to be good in some said scenarios. But as far as most scenarios, you're, you're, you're going to be stumbling and fumbling. And that's something that I wouldn't want. I wouldn't want many people to be in that situation. Oh, sorry, I'm going to go ahead and uh, remove that so we can see. I don't, I don't want people to be in that scenario. I want people to be in a scenario that you could be able to just hang out with your dog and your dog just listens and it's in tune with you. Not the added extra stuff, but you. And that's something that we need to just focus more and more and more of our time on. As opposed to thinking that the, that next technique is what's going to be able to get my dog to, to listen to me. Because the biggest thing is the dogs need a bond to us. And they can bond in a negative way or a positive way. And in my opinion, in just my opinion, mass majority of what is considered dog training, the dogs are bonding to us in a negative way. And for starting in a negative sense, we're trying to dig ourselves out of a hole that in reality, we're not gonna be able to dig out of. We're gonna constantly continuously keep on just struggling over and over and over until we just stop that to, try, to build up a whole new bond here, to allow the dog to be able to positively be with us. The dog wants to, should have to be able to make that decision of saying, I wanna be there because I wanna be there. Not because of what this extra stuff, but because it just wants to be there, man. I want her to know to just hang out with me, just just to hang out with me, not not to be on a. Uh, uh, she's got to be here because it is, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is, or even because of the leash. The leash is just building the bonding process to be able. This is the thing to fast track the bond. I will say yes, you can get a dog to bond with you without a leash. But we as humans are smart and we have evolved and we've evolved these dogs to be able to be just as smart as us. We have gotten to the point that we knew day one, we saw it like, how can I get this dog to stay close to me? And, and century after century, we've been doing that. 
And we've been watching and seeing how we could fast track some things. But at the same time, I sit here and use the word fast track and someone said, oh, I want it in 24 hours. No, no. Fast tracking means it might not take two, four years, but it might take two to five months. It might take six to eight months. It might take a year. But fast tracking it a year is way better than four or five years. That's the fast track that I'm talking about. And that's the part that a lot of us don't want to, we don't want to put that in. And in reality, what I'm saying is, is to do some, something that's so simple that it's not like it's more work. It's actually way less work to just have the dog be there. But at the same time, you have to make sure that you're understanding the proper relationship of what that dog is. The dog is an added bonus to your life. It is not your life. And if it is your life, just get rid of the dog. Get rid of the dog because you're, you're destroying the relationship with that dog. You, you are. And you're going to struggle and you're going to struggle and you're going to struggle. And you're going to struggle in a, in a lot more than just worrying about your dog because your dog is just poking holes in you of having an understanding of what you need to work on. But just what I've come, come to see is we need the dogs to trust us before we could do anything to them. Before you can even say no. Before you can try to discipline the dog. Before you can try and correct the dog. Before you can try to even manhandle the dog. I, I'm using crazy words right now just to make it clear. Manhandle, to get the dog off the couch. To, to get it to do anything. You, 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 the dog has to trust you. Because that's where, this, this is where everything in dog training stuff goes into more and more pressure. That's why you start with the treat and you're like, okay, it's not working. Now I need some pressure. And then the pressure goes to more pressure and it goes to more pressure. Because when the dog doesn't trust you, it's going to keep pushing and pushing and pushing. And then the only way you can get it to listen to you is by more. Get it to listen to you, get it by more. You get to that point that sometime that the dog finally seems like it, it, it stopped, it's chill. And then you realize, no, that was just for a brief moment. But when the dog trusts you, I can put this leash on her and I can move here and she's just going to come with me. I don't need no, no pressure on this leash. She's just, we're just dancing together. She's like, okay, where are we going? Where are we going? But if she didn't trust me like day one, <laughs> I'm having to pull this dog, like, like physically like pull her to get her to come to me. But today, because she's starting to trust me more, she's more in tuned with me. She's like, okay, we're going over, we're going over here. Okay, we're stopping here, we're stopping here. Okay, we're going to go over there. We're going to make that happen over there. And, and, and every little thing. So if she tries to jump on me, I could just give her a tiny bit. You can see she has it in her, but I've been kind of telling her not to jump on me anymore. She got a, a, a little too wild. She, 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 she weighs more than she looks. This is like a 60 pound dog already. I think she's gonna be like 70 pounds when she's full grown. But uh, 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 I give her a little bit of pressure. Just for, for right now, all I'm doing is using my hands like this in reality to tell her to just get off of me. I'm telling her to get off of me. I'm telling her to get off of me. And that, it's just gonna work that I don't need to add any, anything extra because she's starting to trust me. She's starting to understand what it is that I'm looking for. She's listening to me. When she don't trust me, she ain't gonna listen to me. She's like in the world and doing whatever she wants to do. But when she trusts me, she's gonna listen to my word and say, hey dude, I, I hear what you're saying. I, I listen to that. I got you. I'm on, I'm on board. And this is a huge difference when, for me personally, what I just see with humans and dogs. The dogs need us to trust, they need to trust us for them to listen to us. But we as humans, we need respect for, the, for somebody to listen to us. I could trust everyone on the planet that everything is going to be all right. But I'm not going to respect you if, if I'm not going to really listen and or said take, like, take, take advice from anybody if I don't respect you. You got to like prove that in a way. That's, a, that's the thing that I want to say with that. And that's the thing that the dogs are about the trust. They got to prove it. Prove it. Prove that I could trust you. Prove that you're not going to come at me with no foolishness. Prove that you're going to be there for me. Prove that you're not going to hurt me. Prove that you're, you're, you're going to give me some food, man. You're going to give me some water. You're going to give me a safe place to sleep. You're going to keep me away from danger. You're going to get those weird, strange-looking dogs away from me. You're going to be able to do this. Word. They're, they're saying, prove it. That's what the dog is saying. And that's what we as humans say to other humans. Prove that I need to respect you. Prove it. Prove it that yo, you, you know what you're doing. Prove it. Show me something. That's a big thing that we as humans love to show me. Once you show me, I'll listen to you. But if you can't show me, I don't want to, I don't want to hear nothing that you got to say. And that's what I say. And I made a, a video just going on a crazy talk about that, about dogs. Like months and months ago, show me the dog. Show me. Show me what you're doing. Show me that you can do anything. Instead of just standing there talking, talking, talking. You're just talking, man. Just talking. I'll listen. I'll trust you for the talking. But as far as a really just uh, really understanding what you're saying and, and say that I'm going to do I need to respect that. And that's the opposite of how dogs are. And this is why I'm saying we have an oppositeness going on with dogs. It's all backwards. It's backwards, man. It's so backwards. And I, I don't want to use the term my daddy always uh, called that, but I, don't, I, can't, I can't use certain words in my, in my vocabulary anymore. But it's just backwards, man. It's so backwards. And that's why we're struggling, because we're trying to work backwards. 
We're trying to like literally start at the finish line and get to the start line. That's not the way it works. We got to start at the starting line. The starting line with dogs is trust. It's trust, man. It's trust. It's, it's a, not doing anything to them, but allowing them to just be. And they're going to come to you. I have still yet to see an animal. I mean, this works with every animal, but dogs are different in the sense that they're like, you, 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 you can't play no foolishness with them. I can play foolishness with a chicken. I can give it treats and treats and treats. They'll sit in my hand, treats and treats and treats. And after some time, it looks at me like, oh, hey, you're, you're the coolest thing ever. Birds and things like that, you can do that too. As far as I know, whales and dolphins and a lot of these things, you can do that too. You can give them treat after treat after treat after treat after treat. And that's how you build that trust. But with dogs and horses, you do not build trust that way. That's why we have things that are just getting so complicated. Because you're trying to give them treats and that's, not getting, the, that's getting the dog even more suspicious. Like, what's going on? What's happening? And then it creates a dog that's pushy and unruly and just doesn't want to listen because we didn't come at it at the start. We came at it at the finish. We could finish it off with treats. I could give her treats right now today to real up, upgrade what we're doing because you're starting to trust me. But for me personally, I like to just, I like to just let it, let it hang for as long as absolute possible. As long as absolute possible. I mean, as long as possible. I want to just, just chill, relax for as long as possible so that I have something that I know is going to be really, really, really good in the end. Because I don't have, I don't, I'm not in this to, to rush. I'm in this for the long run. I'm planning on having this dog, my dogs, all my dogs for as long as absolute possible. Her being a year right now, I'm hoping that I can push this for at least another 15 years. That, that's, that's, I'm in it for the long run, not for the short-term gains. And that's where a true, great, amazing relationship comes from. When you're looking at the start, trying to look at the end, as opposed to already being at the end. And, and trying, to, trying to implement things at the end and trying to get what you want. No, no, that's, you, you, you're stumbling and fumbling. You're fum, fumbling and fumbling, man. You're just fumbling. You, you're you're going to continuously keep on failing. You're going to continuously keep on seeing things just, just, just not, not come into place for you. You're going to continuously keep on seeing things just get, getting you to be, be super, super aggravated, man. Aggravated and annoyed all the time. That's, that's something that I just, I don't, I don't, I don't want anyone to, to have to deal with that. I want, I want you to be able to have the success that I simply see that I'm able to get with doing Nothing with the dogs to get them to trust me. And then I could do whatever we want, man. We could do, we could go, we could, do you want to train the sit? Do you want to train the downs? Do you want to train all that? Do all that. But do it once the dog trusts you. And that's the biggest thing is, is someone might say, how, how do I know when my dog trusts me? When your dog is willing to be around you for you, not sniffing your hands what you got, not sniffing your pockets for what you got, but it's around you for you. When it, it, it when it, because the biggest thing that I'm really testing and challenging with all my dogs with that trust thing is when I say their name, they better come to me. They're just going to come. You know, check it. What, what, what's going on, man? What, what are you doing? Okay, nothing. Okay, then they take off again. But if I can't get them to come back to me, I, I, I'm pushing things way too, way too soon, way too fast. And that's the beauty of a leash, that I could have the dog stay with me and stay close to me so that if I do need to call them, that I can easily get them back to me and not mess it up a single time. So they, they, they're always there. And that's, that's what I'm looking for all the time. And, and it's something that is not complicated. And once I get my dog to be able to come back to me, because like every day we go on trail, there's sticky situations going on. She's, she's pulling in to go look at this or going this and going this. And that's the time that I start testing where, I, where we are. I say, hey, Ophi, I see what she does. If she stops, she looks back and she comes to me. I'm like, okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're starting to make progress. But if she's just on a freight train and she don't listen to her name, that's where the treats and the pressure have to come in. That's where you're, you're, you're trying to play this trickery game to get them to come back to you as opposed to just coming back to you. That's something that I, I, I test and challenge all of my dogs with to figure out where I am and what's going on. And I realized today that my shepherd, he's, he's good, but he's like 80% good. And I, I, I want him to be at least 90%. I don't want that perfection, but 80, 80, 80 ain't cutting it for him. Just basically, make, based off of the people's perception of how they see him. People are terrified when they see these German shepherds, especially these, these, the, the, the ones that look like mine. I don't know what it is. People are terrified. They see the black ones. They see the white ones. They see the other colored ones. They fine. But those that dark brown with that black, People just, damn, they, they be walking around, they're just, they're like, oh, oh, look at that dog. <laughs> it's all right, man, we good. So he's got to be a little bit better. Or I could be way more relaxed and loose with her because she's, she's, people are just like, oh, let me see, I just want to pet her, I just want to, and she's, she's, it doesn't terrify people. So it's just the differences of what I need with each of these dogs based on public, public perception, unfortunately. But the big thing that I'd start to challenge with that trust is, does my dog come to me? If your dog doesn't come to you, it, it don't, it don't, it don't give a crap about you. And that's why there's, there's all these games and all this stuff. I got a game, a video I made of how to get a good recall. It really does work. But it, at the end of the day, it's still 
doing nothing but walking to the dog and getting the dog and moving along with the dog and not having anything with you. Not trying to trick the dog, come here, come here, come here, trying to do all this mess. But just the dog is just there. The dog is just with you. This is what I want my dog to look like with me. I'm the world's greatest thing. That's how they should be. And, and that's who you, what the relationship that you want. And most of y'all don't have that. And, and that's, that's at, at the end of the day for me, it's sad because I wish you could have that. It's, it's, it's sad when you're just struggling with the dog. It's, 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 it's sad, man. I want you to have more. I want you to be able to do more. And, and being able to just do less up front is going to be able to allow you to be able to do the more later on. Don't try to go backwards with this stuff. Just take your time and slow it down. Put the dog on leash and have the dog stay with you and just don't do nothing to the dog. Don't allow the dog to go pull and go all kinds of places. Get the dog to be able to calm down. Get the dog to be able to relax. Get the dog chill. The dog is chill. Just sit in that. Sit in it and just relax in that. Allow the dog to be able to see you in that. Because that's what she's constantly doing every single time we're going for a walk. She's studying the heck out of me. This is why I really, really like, especially just taking her in more remote areas where there's not a lot of people, a lot of dogs for her to really like pull into to really get messed up. But that's why I like that bungee leash aspect because she's looking at me. She's like, what's going on? And then sometimes she just, she literally, we, we go fight, fly to freeze. She freezes. She's like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Am I doing okay? And I give her no feedback and we just walk. She feels the leash. She gets a little bungee. She just comes along. She's like, oh, okay. Everything's fine. Everything's all right. Because she's still not hundred percent in trust of what's going on. She's not sure that I'm going to be able to, the main thing I'm going to say is take care of her. She's like, you got that, right? I'm like, I got it, man. Dog's barking in my face. You got it, right? I'm like, yeah, we're good. There's nothing to worry about here. Just relax. And she's, she's, she's learning. But when we're, we're jerking and moving, that's where the dog's like, I, I, don't, I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what, what's happening right now. Am I okay? Are you mad at me? Is everything is all right? And that's, that's where we want to be able to just to do the nothingness and allow them to be able to come close to us. They will come close. I'm telling you, they'll come close. I'm telling you, you will know when it's time to just continue to keep on moving further and further with where, what, where I want to go next. But if your dog can't just simply hang out with you, with you, you're, 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 you're struggling right now. And, and you, you got to change that up a little bit with what it is that, that you're, you're looking for. And it's like right here, right now is the simple thing that I don't want to call her because I don't want her not to come back to me. Because if she doesn't come back right away, then, then we're, we're button heads because now I got to do some extra trickery. So that's why for me, if I have my dog off leash somewhere and I'm hanging out, I don't call them. I just go and get them and I bring them back to me. And they're like, oh, okay, I'll just come to you. So there's no, there's no hostile going on. There's no, there's no sticky situations happening. There's nothing that, that's going on that's in a way that's going to uh, be able to get you in a, in a situation where you're just like, I don't know what's happening here. I don't know what's happening. So I just come and I come get her. And I just say, you just come stay over here. So for me, my next stage is with her is just to let her off leash, let her walk and just let her do what she do and know that you can come to me and there's nothing dangerous that's going to happen to you. You can just come. We're good. We're good. OK, then you can go ahead and go again. And I start that sequence going and it's just everything is just slow and steady. But at first, I, I, I'm not going to let this dog get too far away from me because for one, I might not be able to catch up to her. These dogs are fast. They start playing that chase game. You're going to be out there for an hour. Especially you come out here in my fields and doing this. You're you going to be here for three hours. These dogs going to be running. <laughs> You're you going to be going deep at it. Then you get frustrated, and then you finally get to the dog, and then that's when you destroy your, your uh, trust that you've been building up. You can literally destroy it all in a day. Then you got to start over and keep going again. And that's, that's something that primarily we all need to focus on. We cannot buy it. We cannot give them enough treats and trick them into it. We cannot force it. We cannot, we cannot do anything. We have to just give them time. And they're going to come to us when they're ready to come to us. Thank you. Okay. That's a good girl. We're working on that jumping. We getting there. We getting there. <laughs> She'll get there. Good girl.